Hi guys, welcome back. Um, so today I want to talk about time shifts, dimensions, and um, creation. And like how you can actually control and do control to some extent changing from one dimension to another. Um, so I want to start with saying that we walk through dimensions all the time. And sometimes we don't realize it. Okay. But for those of you that have been following me for a while, um, may remember the story of myself and my two daughters when we were moving, uh, being at a stop sign. I saw the truck coming, you know, slowing down had a turning signal on to turn right onto the road that we were on. Um, definitely slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Had a whole hay wagon full of hay on the uh, back of his truck. And uh, I was absolutely, I'm a very good driver. And I was watching him very closely and I was absolutely convinced that he was going to turn onto that road. And I waited, waited, waited until I saw his wheels coming off the road and onto the road we were on that we were wanting to pull off of. And I went ahead and hit the gas and pulled out. And, you know, as I'm pulling out, I'm looking to my right to make sure it's still absolutely clear there before I cross the line, you know, to get on into the other lane across the road. And, um, uh, this truck wasn't turning and my 19 year old daughter at the time 19 was in the passenger seat and she was looking at the truck and still watching the truck and see, seeing that he wasn't turning and all she said was oh no and we literally like dematerialized we're not there we were there we were there. We could still see each other. We were still in our vehicle. We were still traveling across those lanes to the next, to the lane I needed to be in. But that truck wasn't there in our reality. And we weren't there in his. I used to refer to this as rendering ourselves invisible. And in a sense, that is exactly what we've done. But in the reality of it, it's that we've blipped out of this reality and into another one temporarily. Um, this reminds me of a, a movie. I think it was called Jumper. And I'm pretty sure maybe Angelina Jolie was in it. I don't remember exactly who I was in it, but it was called Jumper where you could jump time. You could jump dimensions. And that's exactly what we're doing. When I would stand in the hallway at school by the lockers and render myself invisible, I was still seeing everything around me. The people walking past me, the lockers I was standing against, everything in the school was exactly the same, except that they couldn't see me. And I wasn't technically invisible, but I was invisible because I went to a different dimension. I went into a different time slip, right? We all have multiple us, multiple yous in the universe. And there are multiple universes. And there are also, also multiple layers of dimension within each fabric or each veil or each dimension. Um, there are nine dimensions in each uh, system, solar system, but it's a system. Within each system, there are nine dimensions, right? And within each of the nine dimensions, there are 11 dimensions that go this way. Okay. The nine dimensions go this way. And we are in the third dimension 
the third dimensional plane of existence, of reality. But there are eight other dimensions within our reality. That's how the spirit world crosses over. That's how the energetic imprints that you leave on your uh, your possessions when you care about your items. Um, you're leaving an imprint of energy, an energy signature on them. That's why it's called possessions, because you've you have officially possessed it. Okay. The Native Americans would burn all of the belongings uh, that belonged to an individual when they passed away. They not only burned the body, cremated the body, they also cremated their possessions because it's bad energy. It's bad mojo if you take someone's possessions without their will. Okay. Uh, they have to give it to you of their own free will for you to have the good aspects of their energy signature in their possessions. If you take it through theft or dishonesty of any sort, um, you know, like those vultures that we refer to in families that when someone dies, they all go to their house and take everything they can. They're, they are actually taking those possessions, whatever they were, of the negative imprint the negative aspects of that person's soul and no it doesn't mean you touch something and you have a negative thought so it imprints that it imprints your entire <coughs> excuse me your entire soul dna energy imprint on literally everything that you touch but the more you care about it the more strongly imprinted it is so Let's say grandma has a favorite china cabinet that she absolutely adores. She always wanted one just like it. She finally got one. She adores her china cabinet. She polishes it. She dusts it. She cleans the glass on it all the time. She keeps it immaculately clean and beautiful. She is over and over and over again repeatedly adding her alchemical process, her energetic DNA imprint blueprint to this item, this China cabinet. Okay. Now grandma, God love her, passes away. And she doesn't have that piece of paper that we call a living will. Gee, I wonder why they decided to name it that. Would it be because we willfully are saying we want Johnny and Susie to have this and that and Eddie and Marla can have those things over there and you know Kenny and Paul can have those other things that's us giving it up willfully after we are done with our possessions if they're not given up willfully we will receive the negative aspects of that person within those items by default. It's all part of learning the balance of the laws and respecting them, honoring them, appreciating them, loving them for everything that they are. So keep that in mind. Now, back to what I was saying, we have 11 dimensions within each dimensional level. On those 11 dimensions that would go this direction you could penetrate a veil and get a sneak peek at another dimension purely by accident some people call it by deja vu or Mandela effect but that's really not what those, either one of those are they just attribute it to that they just throw it into that type of category because they don't understand what's happening and if they're not looking at it from like a metaphysical aspect or paranormal aspect they would attribute it to uh, memory loss simple as that memory loss but it wasn't memory loss at all when you walked into another room to get something and you forgot what it was that you went for you know, we've all done that right we have all done that but when you're doing that that's not memory loss. 
That is you setting the action, the, you're setting the intent in motion to move to another location to collect something, to do something, right? You're setting the intent in motion to move from point A to point B for whatever reason. But in the process of moving from point A to point B, you hit autopilot on your avatar. So your avatar is in motion through the intent program. I'm going to this room. And it does that. It goes to that room. But in the process of while you're on autopilot, your mind is wandering and thinking about other things and focusing on them. So the thought just turned around and looked the other way while autopilot drives your avatar to point B. So when you get to point B, just like I was actually still in that school at those lockers, but nobody could see me, just like we were in that car that did not get hit, that somehow that truck just drove right through us and, he, and it flipped him out because he didn't know where the hell we went. We're in heaven's name. We went, freaked him out for sure too, uh, from his obvious response to all of it. You say you get to the kitchen, you can't remember what in the world you even went to the kitchen for. So what do you do? You retrace your steps. In retracing your steps, your focus now is on your action of intent. They're in line with each other. You took it off of autopilot and retract your steps of where you were at. And you already know that on some level. You already know that. You just don't understand that you know that. Okay? That's one of those things that you know you know. You just don't know you know it. Hmm. Yeah. It's one of those things that you know. You just don't know how you know it. That's a simplified way to say it. But that's essentially what you're doing. You're, you're jumping time. You jumped into another dimension where, I mean, you know, I could still live in this house in another dimension. I could still live in the same town in another dimension. And then in another dimension from that, I live in a totally different town, totally different house, you know? It's where is that focus? If my focus is on going to another dimension to view a different version of this earth, this life, this me, then I would go there. But if I'm not focused on going there and I'm focused on going somewhere that looks like here, I'm going to go to another dimension that is similar in the programming to what I'm focusing on, the most similar, the most alike. Do you see? That's the way it works. So we walk through dimensions all the time. We just don't realize that we're doing it. Action plus focus equals creation. If I focus, on my intentional action to walk to the kitchen to get a cup of coffee the coffee is there and I get the cup I have my coffee okay I mean it, that's a simplified form there's bigger forms of this creation um, and, and broader even because that's what the dimensions you see the dimensions matter your level of consciousness and awareness of the dimensions and which one you can go into or how far you want to go is going to determine how much you can manifest and create willfully um, consciously create okay <clears throat> so focus focus on an intent 
and putting that that intent into motion results in a creation um, in this reality a creation that's in this reality but if your action is moving from your intent but your focus changes that's going to result in an alternate reality an alternate state of mind um, an alternate dimension so there's multiple use there's multiple dimensions and there's multiple levels of dimensions within each dimension again a trinity there are nine dimensions per universe and there are 11 D realities or veils within each reality or veil or dimension and I know that sounds a little complicated um, but you know like 1d 2d 3d I mean you know it's right you know you understand 1d 2d like this is 2d right that's a 2D thing. It's flat. Um, this is more of a 3D thing. My cigarette case. Right? And, and 4D and 5D and so on. And thought really does matter. Like, thought really does matter, guys. Your focus matters. Um, and we all know this on some level. I'm just trying to help you understand how to know yourself better because you do already know it everyone knows it my mother has said the most innocent things that prove that we know it um, because she certainly doesn't understand the things that I talk about and teach she's still trying to learn from me at 88 years old God love her um, and my elderly uh, mother-in-law that is no longer with us in physical form People used to jokingly say, uh, don't get on her bad side because if she prayed to God, she was in such close connection with God that if you got on her bad side and she prayed to God and told him about you, something bad was going to happen to you. Because the power of prayer is real. Because our focus and intent and thought is real. It affects things. It's a huge ripple effect at some points. And others, not so much and more subtle. But thought always matters. It's your will. It's your power. And you need to be mindful and conscious of it. And if you could be aware of it, you could really change a lot of things in your life to be really great. Really great. But because you're not conscious of it, you're not even aware that you are constantly a creator. And that every thought, every word, and every action or deed that you do that is negative towards yourself or someone else is actually a sin. That's the true meaning of sin. You're creating a spell. You're creating a curse. You're creating, through an alchemical process of thought, intent, and action, an outcome, a specific outcome. So I want you to really let that soak in. We create sin and curses and karma for ourselves and others through our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, our action, our intent. Okay? So I want you to really let that soak in. Because, like I said, on some level, we all already know this. And back to my mother now. My mother was married to my father for 25 years. 
and he was an alcoholic and he was a, a real piece of work at times, you know, to deal with, particularly for her. And when she eventually divorced him and we got, we moved away from him, uh, she would often make a comment to me that if she wanted to, she could have prayed him to death. She could have prayed him dead. But that she don't have that in her heart. Clearly that lesson was weighing on her conscience for her to learn from. Or maybe just to teach me so that I could eventually help her to understand it. Because I am her teacher now. But that stuck with me. So much so, I want to show you this. That journal, that copybook journal that I've been using lately to do a lot of my lessons to teach you all with, literally had this post-it note stuck inside the, the front page, the front cover. Okay, this very old post-it note that says, Mom said she could have prayed Dad dead and he would have died and he knew it and she knew it and that he would tell people that he would tell people that my mother could have prayed him to be dead and it would have happened it's the power of prayer guys it's the power of that belief in that action that intent happening which equals zero faith i mean zero doubt and 100 percent faith right you have complete faith that when you pray and ask God to do something for you that's so very important that he's going to deliver. And yes, he is, but he is through you and through your faith that becomes the intent and the action that creates the reality. And that's exactly what Jesus was trying to tell you. That through the Father, you are a miracle worker through your will through your intent through where your heart is at now I just want to make a small PSA public statement yeah PSA public public statement announcement something like that a PSA we'll just leave it there I'm gonna make a small PSA here and I'm gonna to say to you Because I know some of you are out there thinking about judgment stuff right now. Judgment thoughts. About my mother praying my dad dead. Judgment thoughts. For her or against her. You're, you're thinking judgment thoughts. So here's what I want to say to that. When or if you are ever truly in a detrimental situation and you wish someone harm and it happens to them and so then in turn because it happened you have this heavy burden of guilt upon you because you know that you secretly wished that on someone I want you to give yourself permission to forgive yourself for that because you were in an absolutely extreme detrimental position if it's down to the wire and it's your life or theirs you are not creating a sin and you are not creating bad karma because you wished this violence this attack this whatever it is to stop and it happened I don't want you to feel bad for that you shouldn't and if you do feel bad for it, then you most certainly will be punished for it, suffer for it, because it was your choice to suffer through the will of the choice to feel the guilt. Do you understand how this is working mathematically? Also for the other side of that, should you wish ill intent on anyone 
and it does not come from your space of heart and true survival, true pureness of the need, a true need. And something is the result of negative events happening to them, then you most certainly will have bad karma because your heart was in a bad place with it. Okay? I want to remind everyone of that. I want to remind you to be mindful of your thoughts and really check in with yourself to make sure that your intentions, your thoughts, your words, your deeds come from a good place. Because if you're doing something for somebody and on the outside it looks like you're doing a generous thing, but on the inside you're thinking nasty, terrible, trivial thoughts, about doing the work or them or whatever it is that's going to hurt you and it's going to hurt them it's going to hurt everybody that whatever you're doing is going to affect it's a ripple effect so if you're doing it out of the joy of your heart and the goodness of your heart you're blessing everyone including yourself if you're doing it out of mal intent and it's really just to look good on the surface, you're cursing everyone, including yourself. Thoughts matter. They should matter to everybody because they do create in physical matter. They do. It's to be taken seriously, not lightly. Not at all. Not at all. But on a happier note, we can blip through dimensions and not even freaking realize we're doing it. How cool is that? That's some fun, trippy stuff. My brother does it all the time and he don't like it. He don't think it's so fun. He sees an alternate me in, in this other reality and he knows it's not me. Because, well, she don't really act like I do. Um, and she dresses different than I do. She wears all black. Go figure. And that's a funny thing, because I used to wear all black in my, like, my teens and my 20s and my early 30s. I did that whole goth look, and I only wore black or white. But he doesn't like going there. Um, but he's doing it intentionally to learn, to gain more knowledge. Um, he just doesn't like it there. It's not as it's not as good of a world as we have in this dimension. It's it's more like the uh, shit already hit the fan, and nobody nobody really woke up, and there were no volunteers there, and um, it's like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome kind of chaos, pretty much, you know ruins and uh, scavenging to survive everybody living in very poor shack type conditions and you know dungeon type cave homes and weird stuff like that weird terrible things that I was actually shown in my vision could be our reality here if uh, volunteers weren't here and the awakening didn't take place the way that it should for our dimension. Um, those other dimensions are what are collapsing at this time. And we're down to just the two now. <coughs> Again with the twos. Archangel Uriel, if you're listening, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. Um, back to the twos. I got to get my hair up from behind me, guys. I can't stand it when I sit back on it. But yeah, so we're funneling down to the two timelines. Or we already have. We have we have funneled down, effectively, to the two. And perhaps even, effectively, are funneling down to just the one. That's what else I wanted to talk to you about. And I'm going to I'm gonna share another one of... Uh, Gina Marie 
Collins, I think is her name. I'm sorry I can't remember your name if you're watching. Gina Marie. It's Gina Honey. That's how she talks. That's why I love her, because she's Gina Honey. But Gina Honey has uh, this really great video that I shared in another one of my shows that shows the earth kind of do this split thing, this like cell division split thing from an energy pulse. And um, the energy pulse came from the dark rift of the Milky Way. If no one is understanding that part of it, please go watch them. Go watch some of the other videos so you can catch up. Um, but the timelines funneling down to just the one. See, Dolores Cannon always, that's the one thing I know about her for sure, effectively, other than the three waves of volunteer type loosely story um, is that there's supposed to be a new earth, right? A new uh, heaven, heaven on earth, peace on earth, but that it'll be through a new, a development of a new earth versus, you know, the old earth still being here and like all of the lower vibrating people that aren't ready to wake up yet will stay on this planet earth and all of us that are ascending and evolving go to this new planet earth is her understanding of it but that's not my understanding of it my understanding of it is the collapse of two timelines down to one and that nothing can stop that from happening and that the great awakening is the inevitable outcome of all of the different timelines but i think that split that we were seeing the other day and this energy blast that came at it i personally felt like was an assault an attack rather than uh, part of the natural process of the energies in the dark rift of the Milky Way. And I didn't understand why I instinctively felt that it was an assault because I do understand that we're supposed to be getting these bombardments of energy from the dark rift, right? The dark matter energy, which is the upgrade. Uh, basically, that's the gist of the dark matter is that it's got the information in its package for the upgrade. That we get that everything gets plants animals people uh planets stars the whole bit we all get it we all get the upgrades uh that's why uh the red spot on jupiter is getting ready to birth another small coronal mass um because that's what stars do in these in these cycles, you know, uh, Venus came from Jupiter and Jupiter's red spot. That's essentially a vagina of the planet. Um, and that's kind of funny because they always try to say that Jupiter is male, but Jupiter's not male, it's female. And, and it's not a planet either for that matter, or not the way you understand planets. Um, it's more of a, a star in standby because we're in a bigger system than just one star. And, um, and Venus will be, you know, Venus is in line to be a big girl star one day to be famous, right? And to be worshiped by all of us as the star someday for this solar system. Um, but I felt like it was an assault or an attack. And I didn't understand that until, um, that video that I was listening to that interview of Dolores Cannon talking about the two Earths and talking about how they would split in half like a cellular division. And I thought, well, this is interesting because, and here's why. So her information, all of it, she's not a channeler. She's not a psychic. She says so herself numerous times, including in the interview I was listening to. All of her information is gained and collected through regression of other people who have been abducted. And most of us, most of the people that watch my shows are familiar with MK Ultra. And the MK Ultra is part of the Dark Fleet's plan, the, the, the Dark Elite's plan to thwart the Great Awakening, to thwart our conscious awareness of who we are and how powerful we are to use the key 
to take the shackles off and no be slaves no more. Uh, so I believe that the uh, some of these clients of hers were MK Ultra, for lack of a better way to say that, I'll turn that into a verb and say that they were MK Ultra and mind controlled so that they would give her that message. Here's why I think that. The Dark Fleet has been looking for a way to thwart the Great Awakening. All of their, you know, yellow book, looking glass, black cube, all these things that they have, these technologies and whatever, um, and psychics that they have, and remote viewers that they have, that are all looking at the two timelines and the outcome, are always seeing the exact same outcome no matter what they do, no matter what is tried, no matter what action is put into place, the ripple effect never results in their optimal timeline. It always results in the Great Awakening timeline. Always. Odds of probability are 100% always in the favor. And they're like, how can this be? We have to find a way to alter this outcome. To be favorable for us so that it's not our demise. We know that they have energy beam weapons. We know that they have solar simulators, sun simulators. We know about Death Stars. We know that that's something that's possible technology to be created. So why wouldn't there be a weapon, a, a beam weapon, pulse, that could be powerful enough that they could literally, from outside of our atmosphere, pulse us, the whole planet, pulse us with some kind of perfect vibration or frequency that will create a rupture and a cellular split. So that they, in effect, can have their earth over here and we'll just take our earth over there and they still have people they could control and reproduce okay are you following me are you staying with me here because there's more to that there has to be free will free will always in the equation always so okay we can't just manipulate their free will to make sure we get our outcome we can't manipulate and fool all of them. We can only manipulate and fool a few. So they manipulate and MK Ultra and mind control a few. That's all they need is a few. Enough for Dolores Cannon to collect her collaborations and file them neatly into a book that says majority or X amount or however she did it says that it's going to be two Earths. She don't know any different. She don't know any different. So I'm not faulting her at all. She was accidentally duped into a piece of misinformation, disinformation being inserted, which was that grain of a lie in her great big stack of truth, rather than a grain of salt that's truth being in a stack of lies, it was opposite for her, right? It was opposite, mirror. It's a mirror. Twos again. Knowledge and wisdom. It's a battle for knowledge and wisdom, guys. Every bit of this is an information war. Info wars. Hello. Are you figuring it out yet? Are you connecting your dots? Are your engines in your brain firing? Are you getting it? All they had to do was infiltrate that one component. Because Dolores Cannon, look how many people she has reached. She's got a broad, vast audience. And they let her go to places like China and teach this. And Russia and teach this. 
and so on and so forth in very well known okay maybe not Russia so much but China definitely is communist they don't allow Christian Christianity teachings they don't allow anything but their own little one belief system in the box to be taught to people but Dolores Cannon was allowed to go there and to tell people her good news why was she allowed to go there she was very proud of herself for that as she should be because she did diligent work and she's a great way shower I am in no way shape or form trying to diminish anything about this lady nothing but you have to understand that they are a worthy adversary and they are looking for a way to thwart the Great Awakening to alter the timeline collapse inevitable end that even Q says nothing can stop what is coming so my point here is if Dolores Cannon can reach so many people across the globe we don't even know what the number is of clients that told her that there's a two earth thing where these people get to stay here on this planet and we go over there on that planet we don't know we're just taking it on faith because all the other things that she says resonates with us but see that's the one thing that did not resonate with me that two earths that did not resonate with me because I've been shown and I know who I am so I'm gonna trust my knowledge we funnel down to one timeline and there's a whole host of other indigenous tribes and peoples that have written the same accounts that I have been shown that I sought out and found after my vision the Hopi the Maya the Sumerians many other the Dogon many tribes are aware of the two timelines funneling down to one not two earths being created this is part of the dark fleet and their plan that's their plan hit it with an energy weapon hit the earth with an energy weapon over and over as often as we can get by with it without damaging the planet so bad that it kills everybody Because we've got all these other people down here that believe that we're creating a new earth. So you see all those people are now MK altered. All those masses of people that believe we're creating a whole nother planet over here and everybody else is going to stay over here on this planet. They're MK altered to put their free will focus to new earth. When in reality, the new earth we create, it's right here, baby. It's this earth. It's this one that you're on right now. And none of your loved ones have to leave you. None of them. We don't have to be separated. We don't have to come to terms with these people just ain't ready to vibrate on our level yet. So they're going to have to live on that other earth over there where we can't see them. That's not what's happening, dude. That is not what's happening. Those same people will still be with you. Their vibration is going to be upgraded with everybody else's by default. Everything in the entire Milky Way galaxy is getting an upgrade because the center of the Milky Way galaxy, our main star, is evolving. Again. It's cyclical. It's a trickle down effect, a ripple out effect that affects the entire galaxy and all of its little solar systems that are within it and all of the inhabitants that are on them. Okay. So be aware of that be aware of that mind your thoughts be careful who you follow because even the best to follow could potentially 
if not careful and shielded, and vetting their information can mislead you, can be infiltrated to provide you with disinformation and misinformation to thwart the Great Awakening. Now, this is not going to work for them. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. It's not going to work. It's going to turn out really bad for a lot of people. If we've got enough free will energy focused on that, it's going to be really bad for a lot of people, everybody. It's going to be really bad. Okay? So we can't let that happen. We can't. But if you, if your focus, if your thought is on that, and it inevitably is going to bring harm, we have to do something to change that. So the more people that we can reach that can willfully change that, the better our outcomes are going to be. Um, otherwise, there is going to be some level of destruction and fallout because that's the odds of probability here. So, you know, I don't quite have all of the pieces to this puzzle, that part, just yet. But I'm certain that it's going to come to me in downloads, or I wouldn't be talking about it. It's going to get channeled through me at some point in the near future. Because that day is upon us very soon. You know, I said in another show that I did that I feel like we might have about seven months left before this really starts um, changing, like drastic earth changes, pole shifts and stuff. So, and that's just because of how fast magnetic north is moving. Um, then I got that calculation. So, we really need to rethink, if you're one of those people that believe we're creating a new earth, um, and leaving an old earth behind for others to live on that have a lower vibration. I need you to really search your soul. I need you to really ask yourself if that's true and accurate and really resonates with you. And if it doesn't, then please, by all means, correct that focus and train it back onto replenishing this beautiful planet that we have and the people that are on it, because people are born good. All of these programs that we're bombarded with is what has hurt people and tainted them and changed them and made them think that's their only choice. And it's not. But you got to get some kind of reprieve, some kind of break, some kind of solace to have the hope to change who you are when you've been downtrodden so far. You're an enlightened one. You're an awakened one. Likely a volunteer. So I ask you, do a check-in. Does this resonate with you? And if so, focus on this beautiful Garden of Eden that we were already given and the survival of it and all of its inhabitants collectively in unity together not in division why does division make sense why are so many spiritually enlightened people okay with division versus no man left behind no soul left behind I don't understand that concept from any of you who feel that way at all. I have a true, you know, like military soldier mentality. We leave no man behind. You know, all for one, one for all. What does Q teach you? Where we go, one, we go all. 
Hello? That's not two Earths. That's not giving up on your people just because they're not ready to grow and develop. You don't give up on them. You just let go of trying to control it. You evolving and you developing and you growing and enhancing your abilities and strengthening your power is a trip trickle down effect. Exactly like how the center of the Milky Way galaxy is upgrading and that's a ripple out effect. That's the macro. You are the micro. Your eye looks just like a constellation, or I mean a, a, a galaxy, a nebula, for a reason. You have that power within you, that when you change and you evolve, you're that star that has that trickle-out effect to the other people in your solar system, in your six degrees. You see? This is what I mean. This is what tarot means. When they say that you're breaking familial karma. You're ending all of the karmic debt for everyone by developing yourself. If you want to help your family, your loved ones, your friends, who are not ready to wake up, continue focusing on you. Continue waking you up. Because the more you do that, the better you're helping them without even knowing it. I promise you, I know what I'm talking about there. It's a trickle out effect. Focus on you. Focus your intent on you and protecting this earth and seeing all of it flourish and become the Garden of Eden that it was meant to be. Because we do have that power within us. And it's not hard to do. It's not hard. It's not complicated. It's not far off in your reach. It's right here today in your reach. That real. Don't worry about all the things people are saying everywhere. It's information overload on purpose. It's an information war. It's a spiritual war of knowledge, of hidden, secret, esoteric knowledge until now. And you're ready to learn it. You're ready to try to use it. So I want you to do that by focusing on you. Leave fear behind. Leave doubt behind and leave issues behind for things that need forgiving, you know. Let go. Walk in faith that you developing yourself, you learning yourself, listening to yourself, checking in with yourself and reacting appropriately truly is all you need to do. And it's huge. It seems so small and so simple, but it's so freaking huge because you are the star of this movie. And we are who we've been waiting for. The world as we know it is about to change. Not duplicate, not replicate, not split in half change. It's about to change. Let's change it for something more favorable for all of us, for all of life. All you have to do is focus on you. Learn you. Do you from a heart space. It's that easy, guys. It's that easy. 
drop the fear, forgive yourself, forgive others, and walk in faith. Faith of you, faith of God, faith that the knowing will come as it should. Complete and total, utter faith with zero doubt that God's got this and nothing, nothing can stop what is coming except for one thing, hijacking our free will. It's the key. It's the key, guys. Free will is the key. Do you give your free will over to someone else before you check in with yourself to see if it's truth? Are you still sheeple and don't realize it? Yes, some of you are. In various ways, some of you are. So I'm going to say it once again. It's time to check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's right. And that's how I'm going to close this out. Because I'm starving and y'all are probably tired of hearing me anyway. I've been going on and on for an hour. So I love you. Thank you very much for subscribing. Please like and share the video. Everyone that has donated and contributed to my channel. Deepest, deepest gratitude to you. I love all of my soul family so much. I am so grateful to have found you and you have found me. And on this journey, we are going to create the most beautiful paradise that's lost. Until now. So until next time, guys, be well, be blessed, in love and light. Good night.